Good evening here are tonight's top stories. The Judicial Service Commission appoints a record 10 new Pyun judges. A fire devastates Blue Saki Drive, leaving three homeless and damaging nearby properties. The government pursues the reopening of bauxite operations in the Burbis River. A new oxygen generation plant is commissioned at Lethem Regional Hospital. A tragic car accident in Miami claims the life of a Guyanese woman and injures her husband. The Guyana Police Force receives a 40 HP Yamaha outboard engine to boost marine capabilities. An audit is ongoing into aggregate contracts awarded by the Public Works Ministry. Stay tuned for the details of these stories. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more news. Guyanese woman tragically dies in Miami car accident, husband injured. In a heartbreaking incident, Davina Basandiel, a Guyanese woman, tragically lost her life in a car accident in Miami, Florida, on Saturday. Her husband, Pundit Sarvadial Baisundiel, was also injured and is currently hospitalized. The accident occurred when a white SUV and a gray sedan collided in the southbound lanes near Bird Road, causing both vehicles to partially block the left lane. The Baisawandiels had exited their vehicles and were standing on the side of the road when a pickup truck struck the sedan, hitting both of them. Davina Basandiel died at the scene, while her husband was rushed to the hospital for treatment. The incident was reported by NBC Miami News and has sent shockwaves through both the local Miami community and the Guyanese diaspora, who are mourning the loss and hoping for Pundit Sarvadial Baisundiel's recovery. Guyana Police Force receives 40 HP Yamaha outboard engine to boost marine capabilities. In a timely donation, the Guyana Police Force GPF, has significantly enhanced its marine capabilities with the acquisition of a 40 HP Yamaha outboard engine. The Honorable Robeson Ben, Minister of Home Affairs, presented the engine in a simple ceremony at the Ministry's Brickdam office earlier today, June 25, 2024. The outboard engine, procured by the Community Policing Group CPG, is destined for Region 9, bolstering the GPF's emergency response and crime-fighting capabilities in an area currently grappling with extensive flooding. This donation exemplifies the government's unwavering commitment to enhancing Guyana's security infrastructure through strategic capacity building. Minister Ben, elaborating on this commitment, stated, Our government recognizes the unique challenges faced by different regions, particularly those with complex geographical landscapes like Region 9. This donation is part of our broader strategy to equip our law enforcement agencies with the tools they need to effectively serve and protect all Guyanese citizens. Commissioner of Police Mr. Clifton Hicken, accepting the donation on behalf of the GPF, highlighted its timeliness. This presentation will significantly enhance our marine capacity across the administrative region, particularly in Region 9. The addition of this 40 HP Yamaha engine marks a pivotal advancement in the GPF's continuous efforts to upgrade its marine capabilities and improve its emergency response and crime prevention across Guyana. Mr. Rishi Das, head of the Community Policing Group, CPG, was also present at the handing over ceremony. Fire devastates Blue Saki Drive, leaves three homeless and damages nearby properties. A devastating fire erupted at Lot 265, Blue Saki Drive, South Ruimvelt, Georgetown, yesterday evening, leaving three people homeless and causing significant damage to neighboring properties. The fire department received the call at 1705 HRS and promptly arrived on the scene at 1711 hours. The first jet was activated at 1712 HRS, utilizing a total of 14,573 liters of water to combat the blaze. The fire response team included water tenders number 118, number 85, number 105, and water carrier number 18. The personnel on the scene were sub-officer A.G.I. Scipio, section leader Hackshaw, leading fireman Dickerson, Persaud, Nurse, and 12 additional firefighters. The primary structure involved was a wooden and concrete single-floor building owned by 59-year-old Shellen Glenn. The occupants, Campton Glenn, 53, Campton Glenn Jr., 32, and Kiana Glenn, 5, were left homeless as the fire completely destroyed the building and its contents. Adjacent structures also suffered extensive damage due to the intense heat. 
A two-story wooden and concrete building at Lot 262, Blue Saki Drive lost its northern wall, an air conditioning condenser on the southern wall, six sash windows, and 12 meters of PVC guttering. Another two-story wooden and concrete building at Lot 263, Blue Saki Drive experienced severe damage to 11.3 meters of PVC ceiling and guttering on the southern side wall, along with the complete destruction of one sash window. Additionally, a pearl white Toyota Sequoia V8, PKK2521, parked at Lot 264, Blue Saki Drive sustained significant damage, with the driver's side window completely destroyed and the entire left side of the vehicle severely affected by the heat. The cause of the fire is currently under investigation by the Fire Prevention Department. The firefighting efforts included using one line from water tender number 85 tank supply, a hose reel, and one line from water tender number 118 with a water relay from water carrier number 18 to extinguish the fire. This incident has left a community reeling and three residents in urgent need of assistance and shelter. Further updates will be provided as the investigation continues. Judicial Service Commission appoints record 10 new PUN judges. In a historic move, the Judicial Service Commission has approved the appointment of 10 new PUN judges, marking the single largest batch of judges ever appointed in the country's history. The newly appointed judges are Ms. Nicole Pierre, Mrs. Joy Persaud Singh, Ms. Hassan Yassine, Mrs. Sherdell Isaacs Marcus, Mrs. Deborah Kumar Chetty, Mr. Nigel Niles, Mr. Peter Hugh, Mrs. Priscilla Chandrahanif, Mrs. Jacqueline Josiah Graham, and Mrs. Zamana Alaisipal. They are set to be sworn in by President Irfan Ali on Wednesday. The term of Pyun is derived from French, meaning younger or inferior in rank. In this context, Pyun judges serve under the Chief Justice, who presides as President of the High Court. In a statement, the Supreme Court noted that 37 individuals applied for the positions, with the Judicial Service Commission selecting 10. These new judges will be assigned to serve in Essequibo, Demerara, or Burbis, handling cases in both civil and criminal jurisdictions as needed. Criminal Jurisdiction Courts with criminal jurisdiction handle cases involving violations of criminal law, which are offenses against the state, society, or public order. This includes serious crimes such as murder, drug offenses, and fraud. Civil jurisdiction, courts with civil jurisdiction resolve non-criminal disputes between individuals or organizations. This encompasses contract disputes, property disputes, family law matters, such as divorce and custody, personal injury claims, and defamation. To qualify for these posts, the appointed judges met several stringent criteria. Prior experience as a judge in a court of unlimited jurisdiction in civil and criminal matters within the Commonwealth or a court with appellate jurisdiction from such a court. Eligibility for admission to practice as an attorney at law in Guyana's courts or in another Commonwealth country with similar jurisdiction. At least seven years of practice in such courts. Additionally, the Judicial Service Commission prioritized applicants with a common law background, extensive knowledge, and experience in criminal and civil practice and procedure, and those with a high level of personal integrity. The new judges will adhere to the Supreme Court of Judicature of Guyana's Code of Conduct for judges and magistrates. They will serve until they reach the age of 65. Government pursues reopening of bauxite operations in Burbis River. Years after the Russian-owned bauxite company Ruzel shut down its operations in Guyana, the government is actively working to restart activities in the Burbis River. Natural Resources Minister Vikram Barrett reaffirmed this commitment, emphasizing that the current administration is diligently striving to revive the local bauxite industry. Ruzel's subsidiary, Bauxite Company of Guyana Incorporated BCGI, ceased operations in February 2020 amid industrial unrest, leading to the termination of 326 employees. Prior to their departure, BCGI faced challenges, including low production and the cessation of a duty-free fuel arrangement by the former government, which impacted their operations. The A Partnership for National Unity slash Alliance for Change APNU slash AFC government faced severe criticism for its handling of the situation and its failure to protect the interests of the bauxite workers left jobless by BCGI's exit. 
However, when the People's Progressive Party PPP, assumed office, they initiated negotiations with the company about a potential return. To date, no definitive agreement has been reached, but Minister Barrett assured reporters on Monday that efforts to revive the operations are ongoing. We have been exploring options, we have been speaking with different companies to see how we can get this operation reopened and to go back into production, that is still ongoing, he said. Barrett emphasized that reopening Rusal's operations remains on the government's agenda and is under active discussion. Minister Barrett noted that the bauxite industry suffered a significant decline under the previous administration, dwindling by over 40 percent. He stressed that the sector is now being revitalized by the PPP administration. The bauxite industry is being rebuilt, and we are seeing increased production. The industry is poised to expand even more through the expansion work and investment happening at Bozai and Linden, he added. Recently, the government licensed a remnant deposit to Bozai to boost their production. Additionally, the minister provided an update on efforts to develop the Tarakili area, one of Guyana's largest remaining high-quality bauxite deposits. Barrett mentioned potential collaboration with Suriname to extract and refine these resources. Both Suriname and Guyana have large deposits of gas, making an aluminum plant more feasible now with gas being a cheaper source of power, he said. The discussions with Suriname are ongoing, with no concrete decisions made yet. The government's proactive steps and continued dialogue indicate a strong commitment to revitalizing the bauxite industry and exploring new avenues for economic collaboration and growth. New Oxygen Generation Plant Commissioned at Lethem Regional Hospital The Lethem Regional Hospital has been equipped with a new oxygen generation plant, thanks to a donation from the United States government. The commissioning ceremony was led by Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony, with U.S. Ambassador to Guyana, Nicole Terrio, in attendance. Minister Anthony expressed profound gratitude to the U.S. government for the donation, which includes three oxygen plants valued at a total of $500,000. Highlighting the importance of this development, he noted, one of the most crucial aspects of healthcare is ensuring that we have a reliable supply of oxygen on site. Before having this plant, it was very difficult to get oxygen in the region, especially during the rainy season. The minister emphasized that apart from saving lives, the new plant would significantly reduce costs. Previously, transporting oxygen from Linden to the region cost between $2 and $3 million monthly, in addition to bottling costs. Since the plant began operations, nearly $100 million has been saved. Think about that $100 million, Minister Anthony underscored. Because we didn't have to spend it on oxygen, we can take that and build a health center or do something else with it. That's how important this is. Minister Anthony also highlighted the recent training of 30 young Guyanese as biomedical technicians, emphasizing the benefits of the partnership with the United States for Guyana's healthcare system. He recalled the U.S. government's assistance during the COVID-19 pandemic, which included securing vaccines and providing support for cold storage, as well as helping obtain Paxlovid and antiretrovirals for HIV patients. Additionally, the construction of the National Public Health Reference Laboratory was funded by the U.S. government. I want us once again to say a big thank you to the United States government for the collaboration we've had over the years and the continued collaboration as we move forward, he stated. Ambassador Terrio, emphasizing the spirit of partnership and goodwill between the two countries, noted, these oxygen generators are going to play an incredibly important role in advancing Guyana's national emergency response capability, particularly in far-flung places. She stressed the importance of good healthcare and education for a country's economic growth and highlighted the long-term, sustainable benefits of the oxygen generators, provided they are properly maintained. Recently, Eichelton benefited from the distribution of insecticide-treated bed nets to combat malaria, and in November, a field hospital worth more than a million U.S. dollars was donated. We are committed to the health and success of Guyana and to expanding our strong partnership, working together to achieve our goals and address threats, whether from a pandemic or a belligerent neighbor, Ambassador Terrio affirmed. In addition to the oxygen plant, the government is investing in significant upgrades at the Lethem Hospital, including a new operating theater and an imaging suite, to further enhance its capacity to provide comprehensive healthcare services to the region. Audit ongoing into aggregate contracts awarded by Public Works Ministry 
Upon assuming office in 2020, the government of Guyana embarked on an unprecedented developmental agenda, significantly focusing on improving transport infrastructure across the country. This agenda has been instrumental in stimulating the nation's economy, creating jobs, and circulating wealth. However, it has also placed immense demand on the local supply of aggregate materials such as crusher run and stone, leading to price hikes, with some areas experiencing a 100% increase. In response to these challenges, the government took several steps to understand and address the capacity and logistical issues of local aggregate providers. Throughout 2022, meetings were held with established and new quarry operators to gauge their capacity. Additionally, contractors were permitted to import aggregate materials to meet the demand and keep prices competitive. Despite these efforts, the local market struggled to meet the high demand, resulting in significant price increases. By November 2022, the Ministry of Public Works identified the following estimated aggregate demands. 2020, 61,300 metric tons, MT. 2021, 401,700 metric tons. 2022, 1,337,000 metric tons. 2023, 2,521,000 metric tons. 2024, 3,220,000 metric tons. To support the rising demand, the ministry conducted a public tender for 200,000 tons of Gradia Crusher Run and 100,000 tons of Three Quarters Mint Stone, awarded at 9,000 Guyanese dollars per ton for 200,000 tons. Despite this, there was still a deficit of over 1,100,000 tons. During this period, construction costs soared due to high aggregate prices. In response, and following a public procurement process, the government engaged eight additional suppliers via single-source procurement to address the deficit. These suppliers were vetted, and their aggregate samples tested to ensure fair market value, resulting in approximately 985,000 tons of aggregate supplied to regions 2, 3, 4, and 6. This intervention led to a significant price decrease, with prices dropping from 16,000 Guyanese dollars per ton to 11,500 Guyanese dollars per ton, normalizing the market. As the market stabilized, new quarries began production, more barging services became available, and importation procedures streamlined, leading to increased efficiency and lower costs for private sector suppliers. In 2023, anticipating a demand of 2,500,000 tons, the government continued to play an active role in the aggregate market to prevent future price hikes. A public tender in March 2023 yielded 12 bidders, resulting in awards to three bidders at prices between 10,750 Guyanese dollars to 12,000 Guyanese dollars per ton for Crusher Run and 12,000 Guyanese dollars to 12,500 Guyanese dollars for three quarters and one half aggregates totaling 400,000 tons. Additionally, six contracts via single-source procurement amounted to just over 485,000 tons, priced around 50 US dollars per ton. These efforts ensured that approximately 35% of the country's aggregate requirements were met while allowing space for private sector growth. Aggregate management is handled by a dedicated team following peer-reviewed standard operating procedures, supported by substantial laboratory testing and intermittent audits by internal and external parties. An ongoing audit by the Office of the Auditor General is reviewing aggregate contracts and their implementation to ensure compliance with the laws of Guyana. The Ministry of Public Works remains committed to ensuring value for money, transparency, and accountability in all its endeavors.